no underscore in here. So I'll just get rid of that underscore, stop and start it. And then we should be able to go back to FreeCodeCamp and try this again. And there we go, it passed all the tests, awesome. Hello everyone, I'm Landon Sung, and today we are doing the URL shortener microservice. This is part of the backend development and API projects portion of FreeCodeCamp. And if we look into this, we can do a REPL.IT starter project to open it up. Uh, we have to make it functionally similar to this thing right here, where if we put in a URL like google.com and we post it, then we can take the short URL, um, 40, and then use that, uh, I think it's slash API slash short URL 40, and then it will take me to Google then, because I posted Google as that URL. So anyways, that's what we have to do for this one. And then we can open up our REPL.IT starter project and work on this thing. Uh, let's import it from GitHub. All right, here we go. This is what it looks like when we just opened it up. The first thing we have to do is go into our index.js file and take a look at it. Um, pretty simple so far. <laughs> but we do actually have to use a database for this one. And for, for the database that we're using, it's MongoDB. So uh, go to MongoDB, log in, create a cluster if you don't have one. And then you should be able to go to your clusters or your collections. And then you can see uh, your database. Right now I have my test URL shortener. I can actually delete that and then it will get created again. But under database access, this is where you have your password. Yeah, it's where you store your password. Uh, if I go into database, we can connect to it with connect your application and then using this string here. So what you have to do is you have to copy this and then go into the REPL, but we actually have to use the secrets portion of uh, REPL. So under these tools, uh, you can find secrets. So we can open that up. And then this is where we store our key and value pair. I'm going to name it DB uh, URL or UR, yeah, URL, and then paste in the value. Um, my password is something really weird. And then also after the slash, you have to make sure that it's URL shortener for the database. All right. And then you can add new secret and then it becomes the DB URL. To any, uh, access that value, uh, that's where this .env thing comes in. And we can access it with this pro process.env.db URL is what it would be. And then we also need to install a package. This package is MongoDB. So you can do that by doing npm i MongoDB. MongoDB. And then it should install the latest version of MongoDB for us. And then once that's installed, we can go and require it. So we can do const. I'm actually just going to do Mongo client equals require MongoDB. And now we can connect to it by going const client equals new Mongo client. And then doing process dot env dot db url and then that should connect to mongo db atlas for us with the correct database yeah but to specify what database uh, further we can do const db equals client dot db and then put in url shortener because that's where i want it to go and then for the urls we're going to do db.collection and call them urls so that's the thing that goes underneath the database it's just a collection of urls and we're not going to be using mongoose for this one because i think um, it doesn't require that it's just uh, it's pretty simple so we can just use uh, mongodb for this and then no need to bring in mongoose okay so for our api endpoints we have to go slash API slash short URL, but it's actually a post. So we have to change the get to a post because we're posting data to the backend and then storing it. We're not actually getting that data. We're posting it to save it. So inside of here, this is where we actually have to save 
that URL and that URL is going to be in the body. Uh, to access the body of the request, we actually have to add a couple pieces of middleware first. So underneath this stuff, we're in, or you know what middleware, middleware is this app.use thing. So right here, we have cores middleware and we're uh, doing public middleware to grab our public files. Um, we have to add some middleware in order to get our JSON response out of our out of our request. So we do that with app.use uh, app and we can do express.json. That will be for a JSON request, but we actually don't need this one uh, as much. What we need is uh, this one more so, which is app.use express.url encoded, and there it pops up, and then extended true, extended of true. And then that will make sure that we can actually access our request body. And by request body, I mean uh, doing console.log on our rec.body, like so. And I might as well do that for now and then just see how it goes. So let me run this. All right, for some reason, it's just blanking on this portion. But when I opened it up on its own, then it uh, turned into this. And okay, let's try posting something. I'll post Google. Let's post that. It says greetings, hello, which is right because we're just sending that for now. We're doing res.json greeting hello. But for the body, we get this URL of google.com, which is what we want. So that allows us to actually get it. Uh, another thing uh, this project wants us to do is use DNS lookup in order to make sure that it's an actual uh, real uh, link. So we can do that in our project as well. All we have to do is go in here and also and get URL parser. And that's going to be require URL. We also need DNS lookup. So we can go const DNS equals require DNS. And I spelled DNS wrong. Uh, DNS. All right, so we have DNS. And then down here inside of our thing here, we can make sure that that URL actually exists. So I'm going to give it a variable, const DNS lookup equals DNS dot lookup URL parser dot parse. And we're going to parse our URL and we're going to find its host name, host name. And then we're going to do an async function after that, async of error and address. And then inside of this function, we have to make sure that if there's no address, then respond with an error. If no address, then we have to do res.json error invalid URL, error invalid URL. Okay. Otherwise, we know that it's valid, and then we can actually um, save this to our database. So to get it to save to our database, all we have to do is const result equals await URLs. So our URLs uh, table, which we specified up here as our DB collection, we just grab that object and we do uh, count documents, count documents because I'm going to use a number for the short URL and I'm just going to count it up every every one that I have. So count documents, we're going to count all the documents, okay? And then we're going to do our, and actually instead of naming it results, I'm going to call it URL count. So we're going to get the count of our URLs and then we're going to create our document. URL doc equals this object and it's going to be the URL that's passed in, which is the rec.body.url. And then it's going to be the short URL, which is the number, which is the URL count. Okay. And then we can save this to our database finally with our const result equals await um, urls.insert1. Okay. And then we pass in our UL 
URL document. And then we do console.log result just to make sure we get what we need back. And then we can do res.json and put in our original URL as this URL, um, which is rec.body.url. So instead of doing that, let's actually make its own uh, make it its own variable. So we're going to do const URL equals this rec.body.url, and then we can just pass in URL like that. And for the original URL, just pass in URL, and the short URL is going to be the URL count. Okay. So now let's try running this and see what happens. Hopefully it works. All right, so now this is working, which is awesome. If I pass in free code camp, it says greetings, hello uh, API, which is not good because I have this down here. And I get an error, internal capture trace, but also I think it actually added it because it says acknowledge true and inserted ID, and that's the ID of it. So that looks good. I think I should run this again because I had that last res.json there and I didn't like that. So let's try posting this now. All right, there we go. We get our original URL and our short URL, which is one now because uh, we actually had one in there before. So now if I go to MongoDB Atlas and I go to Browse Collections inside of my URL shortener app URLs, and I should have two free code camps. All right, and the first one has a short URL of zero, and the second one has a short URL of one, which is exactly what I expected. All right. So that's it for this portion of the of the application. The next thing we have to do, if we look at free code camp again, is When we visit this short URL slash that number, then it will redirect to that one uh, that we posted. So we can do that with the app.git down here. We'll do go app.git and the path will be slash API slash short URL um, slash colon short URL. And then we can do our request and response rec res and then do an arrow function. And then in order to do this part, all we have to do is grab our short URL, which it would be const short URL equals our rec.params. We have to grab it out of the params dot short URL. And we're just getting this value right here off of the, off the path. And then we can do our URL documents, const URL doc, and get it from our database. So now we're getting uh, this uh, URL based on the short URL that's passed in. So we do that with await urls.find1. And we just pass in our, our filter, which is short URL equals plus short URL just to turn it into a number. And then all we have to do is do res.redirect, res.redirect and redirect them to the URL doc dot URL. All right, and then that should work. So now if I stop and start this and I go, oh, and also it doesn't like that because I have to make this async. It has to be an async function. Okay, and I try running it again. And there we go, now it's open. If I open up this on a new tab, then I go to slash API slash short URL slash zero should take me to free code camp. And it does look at that. Okay, beautiful. So now I think it's working correctly. Uh, in order to submit this, all we have to do is grab our URL here, go to our free code camp project, paste in the solution link and see if it works. And it does not for now. The short URL will be redirected to the original. Um, for some reason, that's not working. Original URL. Okay. Oh, that's why my my API, it's actually no underscore in here. So just get rid of that underscore, stop and start it. And then we should be able to go back to free code camp and try this again. And there we go. It passed all the tests. Awesome. All right. In order to submit the GitHub link, 
Uh, we can do that pretty quick here. All we have to do is, first of all, make a GitHub repo for it. So let's do that. Let's go to repos, create a new repo. It's going to be FCC, and we'll name it URL shortener. Shortener, yes. All right, create this repo. Oh, I did shortener, not shortener. Darn. Oh, well, screw it. All right, we need to grab our re remote at origin portion, and then we can go in here, enable hidden files. We need to get rid of this git file. And then we have to do git init in our own repo. So I'm going to go to shell. Shell is pretty nice in order to do commands. All right, so I'm going to first clear this. I'm going to do git init in order to get that, that git file back. All right. And then I can do that git remote at origin portion. So I'm going to paste that here. All right, so now we added my GitHub repo as the remote origin. And now I can do git add all, git commit dash m of initial commit. I'm also going to change the branch name. Uh, also, gosh dang, this didn't work again. Uh, okay, let's do git. Uh, branch dash m of main just make sure it's main there we go and also i can't do that for some reason branch rename failed is that because i don't have an initial commit probably all right so i actually have to add my email and name again which is annoying dang all right, there we go. We, I added my email name. Now I believe I can commit all. So we can do commit, initial commits. So that worked. Awesome. And now let me clear this quick. And then we can do git push or git branch dash m main. All right. So now we can do git push dash u origin main. And then it should show up on GitHub. Confirm for the session for the GitHub credentials. And now when I go to GitHub and refresh this page, there we see our repo. Awesome. Now I can grab this URL and go back to free code camp, paste it for the GitHub link and complete it with the GitHub link as well. All right. So that's about it. Uh, just another look at the code because it was a little bit more involved this time. We needed MongoDB. Uh, we got that from doing NPM I MongoDB and then DNS and URL come with uh, Node.js automatically, and we can require them out of the box. So we do that. And then we connect to MongoDB by doing this Mongo client and grabbing our DB URL. And that DB URL comes from our secrets portion of tools. Okay. And then in order to get our body of our post request, we have to do this express.url encoded extended true. I know free code camp, they say to use body parser, but body parser is obsolete now. And we can just do this. And then for our API endpoint, we have a post to short URL where we first make sure that that DNS name is actually valid. If it's invalid, then we say error invalid URL. If it is valid, then we first grab the count of our documents so that we know what to post for the URL count uh, or like that short URL portion of the documents. And then we use that number um, and we put it into the Git request in order to redirect to that URL that you post originally. And that's all she wrote. All right, so if you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. The next thing that we have on our list to do is going to be the exercise tracker. And I've done a couple videos on the exercise tracker before. It's always a little bit more tricky, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you next time. Peace out. Bye.